Hey guys, Quiv the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. And disaster has struck. My whole astrophotography equipment got uh, rained upon <laughs> and it almost broke me. So I want to make this video a bit uh, into several aspects of the, of the video, like a cautionary tale, um, a tale of endurance and of how you shouldn't give up, and also details as to uh, what actually happened and what I did to, uh, to fix things. Let's start with how I discovered what was happening. So I, uh, there were some strong winds that, are, that were predicted for Tokyo a couple of days ago. And uh, because of those strong winds, along with a very like, cold air coming from the north, I wanted to make sure that uh, my telescope was well secured and that the cover that I use for that telescope, because it's always outside of, on my balcony, the telegizmo cover was also well secured and anchored. And so it's, it had been a while since I had been on the balcony because it had been like uh, fairly cloudy uh, recently at least at night and uh, so I went to see it I went to look at the telescope and then I noticed that the telescope was already uncovered the um, cover itself was actually dangling over the railing behind me it was only retained attached to the telescope by the um, the rope that I have around the tripod leg and once I got the cover back on you can see that it had sustained some damage inside there's actually like a lot of red kind of chips in there that had fallen on the telescope things were a bit uh, crazy and uh, yeah at least it hadn't it hadn't flown away it had been retained by this uh, this rope there but obviously <laughs> that was an issue at first I thought nothing of it because it had it hadn't rained for a few days uh, but then I looked at the telescope and I saw that there was a dew on the inside of the corrector plate of the telescope and that's when I knew that my whole equipment had been rained upon and honestly I felt like just like throwing everything off of the balcony I was so frustrated and this is really something that happens with this uh, with this hobby. So the cautionary tale is like, especially if you leave your telescope outside, uh, yeah, check on it from time to time, <laughs> especially when you know it's going to rain or something like that, because I was, um, it was, it was very, uh, very frustrating, and uh, and then I had a lot of things to actually deal with to make the telescope work once more. And honestly, like since I've I have regular like astro dumps where I get like tired of the hobby like why am I such a masochist even though the the hobby like keeps throwing wrenches at me um, it, I, I keep doing it it's like um, it's almost like an abusive relationship with the hobby <laughs> but in this case as well the hobby has, has won and I, I keep doing it and I'm here to tell you that if you feel down if you feel frustrated by the hobby because things are not working you don't know what's happening you can do it. You can you can overcome them. That don't uh, don't give up. I've given up several times, but I always end up coming back to the hobby. I'm pretty sure that would be the same for you. So it's simply easier and faster to not give up in the first place. And this is what I did uh, yesterday. I uh, persisted. Okay, so let's have a look at the extent of the damage. Uh, I've already uh, basically fixed everything, but I want because I was like in such a panic and so frustrated and so annoyed and swearing all the time I couldn't I, it didn't even enter my mind to take a video um, but let's go through uh, the damage so before I go through the damage I want to be uh, very thankful for this dew cover there because effectively um, thanks to the the angle of this uh, of the, the the telescope was parked exactly like this when the rain fell upon it and so that means that the uh, front corrector plate um, here along with the camera and the hyperstar lens, which are my, my preciouses, um, they were not, they don't seem to have been uh, rained upon like at all. There were no marks on the outside of the, uh, of the corrector plate. So that, was, so that was really, really good. And what did get rained upon was my a little uh, Meliquator 2PC. Yes, guys, I know I should be removing, removing this sticker. Uh, I haven't come around to it, but anyway, uh, that PC there, um, the guide cam and guide scope, although the guide scope was covered, um, and of course the mount got rained upon, and uh, what do we have? We have the focuser at the back that got rained upon. A lot of things got rained upon, and amazingly, most of them, actually all of them, survived. 
So the biggest victim was actually the scope itself. The um, computer just kept working as if nothing had happened. And actually what I do is I do check that I can, that my computer is available for remote connections from time to time just to make sure that nothing weird has happened. And it had just gone through the rain without any issues. So points for the computer. The um, focuser as well was more or less unscathed, but some other errors and issues came with the focuser later on that compounded to my frustration and my desire to give up. And I'll go to that uh, in a moment. And the uh, guide cam is uh, mostly fine. But just as I'm making this video, I'm realizing there's actually compensation on the inside of the guide scope that I hadn't noticed yesterday. So I need to air the guide scope. Apparently water got inside the guide scope as well. So that's bad. Okay, so I just removed the guide scope. Uh, what I'm going to do is just um, remove the camera. This should open. You can see the guide scope has, hopefully you can see that the guide scope has dew inside. I will let it air basically. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a singlet. So by just letting it air like that, it should probably fix the issue. Otherwise, I'll, I'll need to buy a new one. Uh, the camera actually, now that I look at it, has a bit of water inside. I'm not sure if it's visible. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to let both dry. And, uh, and hopefully that will fix the issue. Something I hadn't noticed yesterday. Um, anyway, yeah, so a lot of issues. The main issue was the big scope there. And the scope, when I looked inside the mirror, seems to be unscathed, which is awesome. And it didn't look like there was any water within the tube itself, uh, which I was, I was very thankful for, although it turns out I was wrong. The main symptom on the scope was like on the inside of the corrector plate, there was dew. And so I had to do something about this. And I realized there probably was a bit of water in the telescope. So what I did, is and it's fairly easy to do you can um, there are screws on the side ring there uh, that you can remove you can then remove the side ring and that lets you actually pop out the whole corrector plate whenever you do that you want to make sure that you mark the both the telescope and the corrector plate at one spot uh, so that you can reinstall it at exactly the same angle which is what i did so i removed that and i was able to clean the corrector plate from the inside um, as well as on the outside using a mixture of um, an or whatever the waterless um, alcohol, waterless ethanol in my case, and uh, distilled water, so uh, one third, two third mixed together, and uh, that really gave me a, a, a good, nice finish. When you do that, you uh, what I do personally is that I clean from the inside to the outside, and I change my um, my tissues very often, and I use unscented. Uh, very pure um, tissue papers, like clay, uh, unscented Kleenex, basically, uh, and it seems to be uh, to be doing fine. So I was able to clean the whole corrector plate, and before I put it back, I wanted to make sure that there was no water left in the tube. So I actually oriented the tube uh, downwards, and a truckload of water came out. <laughs> I was actually very surprised because no water was actually visible. So it's at the same time extremely frustrating because you feel like you like the, the equipment could really have like died uh, a death and it would have been surprising there. Uh, but I was actually very impressed by the resilience of that equipment. I actually used this to image the uh, horsehead nebula yesterday. I haven't looked at the results yet, but it seems to have uh, worked fine even even with the dew on the inside of the uh, of the guide scope, which I just noticed now. Um, Okay, so at least, you know, things were uh, doing okay. So the next thing that happened is that once I replaced my hyperstar lens um, here, I noticed that it was completely out of collimation. So I had to redo the collimation, collimation on the hyperstar setup. So just so you know what I did, I basically cut um, a document file, like uh, three little pieces there. And this is what is recommended by uh, Starizona, the makers of the hyperstar. And then on the Hyperstar itself, there are collimation screws, three sets of collimation screws. The long one there is a, a push screw, and the a short one there is a pull screw. And basically with Hyperstar, you want to make sure that you start at a position where uh, the, um, the Hyperstar lens is not completely flush 
against the flange. You want to give it like a, a, a portion of a millimeter for you to be able to adjust the angle. And this is what lets you do it. So, and what I did and what you can see here is that I inserted each of those uh, pieces of plastic um, right next to the collimation screws. The three of the collimation screws each had a piece of plastic. And that lets you, and then you can just like, um, untighten the, um, the push screws. You can tighten to the max the pull screws one at a time, like you, you want to tighten gradually around the Hyperstar. And then uh, once the pull, the pull screws are completely tightened, you can tighten the push screws as well. And that, uh, that gives you um, uh, a baseline for the, calibration, uh, the collimation. And in theory, this should be um, like the baseline only and then you need to adjust it some more. For me, I noticed that the result, just like I had when I had first installed Hyperstar, seemed decent. It's not perfect, but it's good enough, which in my book is good enough. <laughs> and so I, um, I left it be. So I am, uh, I mean, it's like, it's obviously a disaster that was preventable. I'll make sure that I have a replacement Telegizmo cover because I used to have several setups on the balcony, each with their own replacement cover. So, uh, so I'll use that instead and I'll make sure to secure it more. And uh, yeah, so disaster struck. And I want to be, uh, to be clear that I was very lucky again. Like the, the mount was fine, nothing, uh, nothing failed with it. Uh, overall, the telescope was fine. Although just as I am saying that I see there is some condensation on the inside of the scope so I will need to remove the corrector plate once more <laughs> to dry out the tube just like I'm doing with the guide scope some more. I was a bit uh, too hasty there but this is easily fixable. When I was doing all of that yesterday it was like early evening and dragged into the night and I got some more issues with the focuser itself like the uh, focuser seemed to be working, but I couldn't achieve autofocus properly and it seemed that there were some screws that had uh, basically dislodged themselves that allowed the, the focuser to just like move around and, uh, and not perform focus properly. So yeah, in the very cold night, I had to fix that as well. It was quite annoying uh, and frustrating as well. But overall, you know, things get better. So my next steps, for today, I'll be drying things out some more. I was a bit too hasty yesterday to image again, uh, but that, that frustration that I felt yesterday really made me want to like scream and give up everything. And I'm, I'm happy that I was able to overcome that. And I hope that if you find you have issues like this as well, if you find like, okay, this is too much, just like, you know, you can make it, you can go through that, you can, it's better to just go through it, to wait it out, to just like take a deep breath and, and then like make it work one thing at a time rather than abandon everything because the hobby will always come to grab you later on, at least it has for me in the past all the time. And so it's always better to, uh, to not abandon it because you know it will come and grab you again. Uh, by the way, if you want to, um, encourage me and keep uh, keep making me go into the hobby and if you want to have uh, access to my videos early and without ads and some bonus uh, processing videos as well uncut and unedited you may want to uh, go and support me on my Pat patreon channel uh, down below link uh, if you want to do so would be super appreciated uh, also if you're not subscribed subscribe uh, like the video leave a comment down below with your own misadventures I would love to see what you think and what has happened to you as well in the past and if you have any advice for me um, and you know more important than that whenever you can don't forget to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time